Once a year, we like to take one evening to acknowledge the outstanding achievements of the members of the Natural Living Walking and Running Club. I travel along with some of the other athletes to national and international competition. I've been in races where a 5,000 meter race and you have 3,000, 4,000 athletes. I've been in races of 10K where you've had as many as 6,000 athletes. And I've been in marathons where you've had as many as 30,000 athletes. And when you get into a race and you look at all these lean, strong bodies, you think, my God, I'm not going to do well. Look at them. But looks are deceiving. And time and time again, people from natural living are able to exhibit a determination and an outstanding athletic ability. There are thousands of running and walking clubs in the United States, and there are many good ones. I'd like to think that we're rather unique because, to my knowledge, we're the only one that's holistic, meaning we help a person understand body, mind, and spirit. It's not just about running. But what's really unique about our club is that we don't start off with any elite athletes. Not one athlete from our group has ever been recruited from any other club because they were fast. And I can remember, I know people with other groups, and they circle around, they see who's good at a race, and they try to recruit them. Hey, come join ours. You'll get free running shoes. You'll get uh, free... Um, uh, and it doesn't work that way. We don't do that. We've Once never recruited elite athletes. We like to start with just average people. In fact, most of the time, we start with people who are not even average, who are just out of shape. And not only just physically out of shape, but frequently people who have low self-esteem, many physical problems, a great deal of self-doubt. They come to our first meeting terrified. They have no idea what's in store for them, and they're not even sure if they'll be able to come to another meeting. And very slowly, step by step, people begin the process of feeling that if they've made one change, they can make another change. They change their diet. They change their attitude. And they see without changing the attitude, you don't get stronger. You don't sustain. You can't be a champion unless you're willing to give something up. And as you're going to hear from many of the athletes here tonight, it's what they gave up that was negative and what they replaced that was positive that allowed them to be a champion. Winning a race doesn't make you a champion. Having the heart of an athlete, the spiritual heart, that makes you a champion. We have people in this group who started off dead last. I was one of those people. When I started race walking, dead last. All the other people that we've worked with, same way. Today, these people, as long as they stick to their principles, they're all winners. We've had over 1,000 victories, 1,000 gold, silver, and bronze medals in championship races in the last five years. I know of no other club that can make that statement, especially when you consider that we're working with just normal people. Well, something happens along the way, and this evening is to honor what happened along the way. To be a champion, and this is only for people who've won a gold, silver, or bronze in a championship race, it's not easy. And it doesn't matter who wasn't in the race. What matters is you were and that you did it. And just the courage to go out there and race, the courage to learn about your own processes is important. I'd like to now invite up here and hold your applause until they all get up here. These are the people in the last year who've been champions. And these are people who deserve a special evening. Frank, I want to read out the names and we'll see. When we call out the name, if you're here, come up, please. Does someone who actually have eyes who can see want to come in with Franco? Well, this Rupert, Rupert Raven is here. No. Herbert Zydek. 
Herbert? Read off. Outstanding Achievement Award. Huh? I can't see. I really need the glasses. I swear to God. <laughs> Running and Walking Club 1993. All right. Now, can we have the other Thank one? You. We'll go right here. They all say the same thing, frankly. Just Shelly. read it. Yes, Shelly's not here. Don Trev. Now, what we'd like to know is when you'd come up, if you could tell us uh, some of the races you did. What's your achievement? Or what's I, your race? I, I've, d I've done a, a mile. I've done a 3,000 meter. I have never done track until uh, we started this year. And uh, I have two gold, uh, one silver, and two bronze, which uh, it's amazing, amusing, just uh, unbelievable, and it's fun. Okay. Herbert, come up there. I would like to thank you uh, very much for this uh, plaque, and I appreciate it also. I want you to know that I had a fantastic 1993. I entered uh, practically every race uh, from 3,000 meter to uh, 40K. And uh, I had in every race a personal best. And uh, I entered for the first time last year national races. And I came in with uh, personal best and first uh, prizes in the uh, 25, 30, and 40K. And uh, I hope to continue the same thing How old in are 1994. You? How old are you? I just turned 54. 54. And how old? 64. 64. All right. Okay, Joe Rowland. Joan Rowland. Joan, would you? It wasn't my very best year, <laughs> but it wasn't bad. I, I had a couple of injuries this year. Uh, but I, I have done races of, of every length in the course of the year, starting with one mile and going up to, I guess this year, the longest one was a 30K. I've gone up to 40 and 50Ks. And I've gotten gold in most of them. I've broken a few records, not as many as I did in previous years, but all the years can't be good. Anyhow, I've had a ball. <laughs> If it wasn't for Barry, I would have never done it. I was one of the ones who came in last, always came in last. I remember being too embarrassed to enter a race because uh, I would cut off because I didn't want to be the last one in there. But um, coming in with the Achilles Track Club, from there, winning a gold, a bronze, and a silver in my age group, and uh, knowing that Gary said, you'd never be alone. We're always there behind you, and knowing that Go past your comfort zone. Well, I've gone past my comfort zone in life, and I've gone past my comfort zone in everything else. And I want to thank you very much, Gary. Uh, Joan Rowland is 67, soon to be 68. And uh, Dolores is 54. Thelma Wilson. She's not here. She's not here. Okay. Let me just mention something about Thelma. This was Thelma's banner year. Thelma won uh, first place in two marathons, uh, including the Houston Marathon, and uh, third place in New York City Marathon. She won the national 10K championship first gold. All told, she won, I think, 16 golds this year in championship races, and she is 60, uh, one or two years of age. This is a, a bit of a surprise for me. Um, I'm 40, and um, I've only started race walking since May of 93, and recently I entered a couple of races, and surprisingly, I came in first uh, for a one-mile race walk, and um, then I did a one-mile run, and I was surprised to receive a, a bronze medal for that. Thank you. Uh, Sonia Morales.
I'm 46 years old, and I, I was not expecting this. Um, I've done one marathon, and this year I've done a 10K. I have a whole bunch of gold and one, <laughs> one silver, and I've been doing indoor racing, and that's quite a challenge, and I've taken all the gold for the indoor. And I'm doing great, and I feel wonderful. Thank you. She not only took all the gold, she was the only woman that we had thus far in our group who was able to qualify uh, for a 16 minutes and a 3,000 meter race indoors, which is really good, considering she's competing against uh, young, very young women and doing remarkably well. And I know when I started training her on the treadmill and she was on that treadmill and just dying, and she said, I want to get off, and I said, no. <laughs> and she said, I'm going to fall, and I said, go ahead. <laughs> and I said, go ahead and throw up. It doesn't matter. This is how you get faster. It's the only way you get faster. And she certainly got faster, and in two weeks, the MAC championship is coming up, and I expect her to take uh, uh, certainly about 15 to 20 seconds off her time, but it, what's nice is, Every one of her races, she just gets faster and faster. Did you do the 30K MAC championship? No. Uh, the 15, 10? 10, 10. 10. Did you do Niagara Falls? No. Okay, that's this year. Our, our women's team, by the way, uh, took the gold at the national 10K championship in Niagara Falls. The men, not all of whom are, are here tonight, we also took the gold. We've taken the gold every single year at the National 10K and the National 40K, we took the gold also. And keep in mind, you're competing with the best teams in America, the best athletes in America, and we've never not taken a gold, and they've never asked us how we do it. Anna Sanatonia. This is a surprise. Uh, I've done, I had started in 92, I think it was, but I dropped out for a number of reasons and I came back this May and did some races in June, July, uh, which I came first in my age group, I'm 43, going to be 43. And uh, in September, Gary saw me going around the reservoir and said, you're doing that race next week which was a national championship of 40K. And I had absolutely no intention of doing that race. But he kept telling me and kept pushing me. And um, I did it. And I came in first in my age group. And I came in fourth overall. And I was just amazed. And I did the, my first New York City marathon in November and came in third in the race walking event. And that was a real thrill. And. Uh, all I can say is I'm so grateful that there's a force of nature out there like Gary who, you know, is a hurricane and a, and a how do you say, terremoto, terremoto, what is it? Earthquake, an earthquake, <laughs> making us tremble out of our lethargy <laughs> and um, seeing is not believing. Believing, what you believe is what you create and what you experience and I want to thank Gary for believing in me and inspiring me to believe in myself. Thank you, Gary. Thank you so much. By the way, in that 40K, it was a brutal day. Uh, it was a tough course. She was up against very experienced athletes, and uh, she just kept her encouragement up. She never, never for a second slowed down. And uh, Liz Shelley, Liz Shelley, by the way, is not here. Let me just mention she she didn't start exercising until June 10th. She was overweight, out of shape. She couldn't do a mile. In a period of less, in fact, I walked out on the track. This was down at the Healing Springs Ranch. And I said, how would you like to be a champion? And she says, I've never won anything in my life. I'm not a champion. And I said, you're not if you don't believe you are. You will be if you believe you will. I said, I don't know why you don't have as much confidence in you as I have in you. I have confidence in everybody. And uh, so she thought about that. 
and it was two o'clock in the morning and we're all sitting around the pool talking and she came over to me and she says, I want to do something in my life that's unique for me. And she said, this is going to be it. She says, I'm going to train. And so we started to work with her. In less than 40 days, we put her in her first race. Her first race, by the way, was a 40K national championship, 25 mile race. And she took a gold. Then uh, two weeks later, we put her in a 30K championship, and then a 5K championship, and the New York City Marathon. When she started to work out, she couldn't do three minutes on a Versa climber. Before the, the week before the New York City Marathon, she did four hours without stopping on a Versa climber. She ran with the lead pack of the lead men in our group the entire marathon and could have gone a lot faster. The men held her back, but she was, said she would do it with them, and she did. I have a picture of her at the 18 mile mark as we were going around a curve. She was as strong as can be. So she is one of the most absolutely dynamic athletes that we have found and balancing it all with children and husband and all this. And so she's not here tonight, and you haven't seen her in a while in the park, but uh, she's back out training again, and you'll see her in the indoor race in about another week. Yeah. Frank? Okay. Althea Giardini. Not here. And uh, we have... Althea, by the way, for the fifth straight year, won an award in the New York Road Running Club as Outstanding Athlete in her age group. Do you know how old she is? 76. 76? That's remarkable. Remarkable. I remember when she first came to her first running club meeting with us, and uh, she lived up in New Paltz. She had her family with her, and she couldn't walk a half a mile. They walked halfway out and had to stop and sit down. Now she's one of the best in America. Here's the last one. is Sam Skinner. Is Elaine Perry here? We'll mention her name. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. She's It's been um it's been amazing um, thinking back to my first marathon, Jamaica, and uh, never thinking that I would be able to do that type of marathon. I remember how we looked, you and I in Jamaica. <laughs> with uh, all the salt, and um, it was amazing. I mean, um, I remember distinctively you telling me, um, Sam will be a lot of um, trophies, medals, and awards. I didn't believe you then, but uh, somehow we kept going with the training, and it's been an amazing eight years. I, I, you know, I just, I can't believe it. Every time I win, we always say it's not about the award. It's about being the best you can be. And uh, I couldn't be in any other club. You know, what, what this club represents, I couldn't be in any other club. And you're an inspiration to us all. But it's, it's been an amazing eight years. By the way, let me just mention, Sam Skinner, was put on a special training program, and he wanted the accelerated training program. And I said, this is four years ago, I said, Sam, you've got to make room for this in your life. Huh. And remember? I remember the stairs. <laughs> I remember the, uh, the Versa climber for, two, uh, for two, uh, two hours. I remember starting off at a half hour. Then Gary would come back, come back and said, we're going to go for an hour. I said, okay and then became an hour and a half. Okay. Then it became two hours. Okay. I remember the flights. I run up those stairs, up and down those stairs. But um, 
I always love the challenge. It's very tough, but um, it does make you out of, of a terrific athlete. You know, if you have the will to do it, and you're doing everything else in your life. I even gave up sex. That's all. <laughs> Sam, you're very sick. No more racing. No more awards. That's too far. <laughs> That's the discipline. That's the real discipline. Well, that's why Franco didn't get an award this year. <laughs> he became your my sex things. He's, he's doing it all. And the most amazing year was um, 1993, where I did, I guess, over 28 races, or uh, 30 races, um, a 50K, and uh, win an award in the New York City Marathon, and become an athlete of the year finally. Uh, it was just an amazing, amazing year. Worked very hard. I'm looking forward to more hard work uh, for 1994. I've already started. Thank you, Gary. Sam, by the way, for those of you who didn't hear, won the New York Road Running Club Outstanding Athlete of the Year of all the competing athletes in New York area. And that takes in thousands and thousands and thousands of athletes. And no matter what record you do, we all, all of us have set records. Those records will be broken. But when you're the athlete of the year or most valuable athlete of the meet, uh, those things can never be taken away. And it's interesting how many other great athletes like Sid Howard are vegetarians, meditate, very focused, very disciplined, they're not compulsive. They're careful about their immune systems. They don't overdo it. They know just how far they can go. And they're models. Sam is now 52? 51. 51 years of age. And he is a model of what a 51-year-old American could be. He has reached a level where he has to push himself and uh, to new heights. And he is doing that now. So we're all very proud of you, Sam. I like to. I like to thank. I didn't get a chance to do this at the awards ceremony. I was very nervous, but I'd like to thank the Natural Living Running Group, you know, for all of their cheers and all of their pushing. That really helped. And I'd like to thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this Buzz. Buzz Perry. Thank you. Buzz, would you like to tell people your race, what you did? Well, I wasn't, I'm a marathon runner, but uh, I got my medals for field events. One for the high jump and also for a 3K. Um, it, it, I learned a lot from this because uh, when I was in high school and college, I was a high, uh, city champ in the high jump. And uh, I lost all my spring in my legs because of my age. And that's because you lose your fast twitch muscles as you get older. So the only way that you can keep them is you gotta keep training and keep using them. So I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna see if I can get back up to those heights that I used to do when I was younger. But uh, I'm getting faster in my running. In fact, I did five marathons. I'm, I've, I'm gonna do my fifth marathon in London and I'm getting older, but I'm getting quicker, and I can't believe my times are really dropping them down. And uh, let's read off some of the names of people who are not here who will take these on Sunday and hand them out there. Okay. Kaka Amano. All right. Sandy Troyer. William Shuckler. He's the 81 year old phenomena. Leo Rivera. Barbara Adler, Elaine Perry, Queenie Thompson, Rupert Raven, Liz Shelley, and that's it. All right, that's 20, yes. No, what we did, we brought four yeah. plaques for people who we knew probably won races, championships, and 
didn't tell us, so we got some for them. So come on up, you can get your, come on up. I, um, like Gary said, when I, when I first ran indoors, I did my first, let me see, before that, did my first marathon, um, New York City Marathon, um, this year. And I did three, 333. And um, then Gary put out the call for us who wanted to, um, to, to do the best that we can, or we could. And um, he told us that, um, he had us come to his, to his home and, and, and work out, and that was really nice. And um, uh, he told us he wouldn't let us race until we were ready. And um, well, I thought that was like a while in the future. And then in the park, he said, um, oh, you guys are, are racing um, next week. So, <laughs> so, so I raced next, I, I raced that week, and I think, I came in almost last, and I, I barely edged out a guy that was like 90 or something like that. And um, Gary probably planned it. But, um, and then each, each, um, each week I got faster, and each week, it's funny how it happened because... Stud, <laughs> Center Park, if it walks, I want it. <laughs> no. <laughs> And my reputation goes on. Yeah, he says, tell him about how big I am, Gary. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> Thank you. you. No, Thank you. Franco did very well. Tell him about your races this year, Franco. Guy, I don't even remember. Um, 40K. The 40K, where Step I, the 40K uh, national race, which arrived, uh, I believe I was third overall. Third. Uh, with a the bronze. Then in Niagara Falls in July for a 10K national. What do you, <laughs> you won a bronze? I won a bronze in there and something for the team we won, right? Gold. The gold for the team, yes. And there were a couple of other races that we did, uh, 5Ks in, uh, um, out in Long Island, a few other, the other races. But I want to say that um, I just love the athletics. I just love race walking. I try to get away sometimes to get a break, but I keep on falling back into it. Uh, I just, I don't even... I don't even know how to explain to you the enjoyment that I get out of it and the benefit that I get out of it. And of course, like everybody else, I go through, through times where I slump down a little bit. But you know what? I always get a kick on the butt from Gary. He wakes me up at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning and pulls me out of bed and I go. And of course, I bitch and moan, but then I'm out there. And um, then he bitches moans more <laughs> when I get there. But then while I'm doing it, I love it. Uh, but I learned that uh, the, the key to uh, perform well is to really keep focused and enjoy most of all what you do, not make it a job. Um, and uh, I, I just love working with the Natural Living group on Sundays. I love when people come and we work out together and giving tips, it's very rewarding to me. So I just want you to know that every time that I can possibly do something, uh, I just love doing it. So, and I thank you all for, for being there. Right. Thanks. Well, we, I think we all appreciate the fact that Franco has been a very tireless coach. He's helped a lot of people become champion athletes. Without his coaching, uh, they wouldn't have been because I've seen what he can do to help people's form. Uh, as an example, when I went from being a runner, I had raced over 400 races, and I was one of the top runners in New York. And uh, I just simply, one day I said, I've, I've done this race too many times. I mean, for the last time going around that park, I said, what am I in this for? You know, hundreds of races everywhere in America, I'd go and race. And I wanted a different challenge. I saw these race walkers out there. I saw Franco. I didn't know him at that time. And I said, I want to try that. So I went out to try race walking. In four weeks after learning some of the fundamentals of the style, just watching people, there was a race. And I thought, well, I'm going to do pretty good. You know, I'm a, you know I can do a 450-mile running and uh, 
uh, I should be able to whip right by all these people. There are about 73 people in the race. I came in 74th. I was last person in. Not only was I last, but by the time I got finished, they were giving out awards. I'll never forget that. I come walking up. There was no finish line, no clock. They're all out there having refreshments. And I'm thinking, God, this is so hard. My legs, they're killing me. I, I'm in pain. I said, how they do this? Well, I couldn't breathe. Right? I thought I had good aerobics. I could not breathe. And I watched them. And over the next three months, I saw that it wasn't the conditioning, it was the form. But everybody had their you know, own idea of form. And I finally started just to fall in to some of the better forms, watching the people were a little faster. And I didn't have a coach. And I lost six months of not having a coach. I remember I thought I was doing great when I could do a 53-minute 10K walking. And I'd do 53 or 1, 53. I'd, by one or two seconds is how close. And I thought one day I'll actually be able to break the 53. Then one day, when I was out there, and Franco says, you know, all you have to do, and he showed me a few techniques. My very next week, I did 49. I knocked four minutes off. Not a second, four minutes. And then from there, I went down. Four weeks later, I set an American record at 46.30. Then I was able to combine my conditioning with the proper form. Since that time, I've improved, and it's something you cannot stop focusing on. Walking, you must continue to focus every step, or you'll lose it. You'll absolutely lose the form. So there's no such thing as getting fast and good and staying that way unless you're constantly disciplined to focus on it. And that's what keeps me constantly doing it. I've involved in triathlons and biathlons and a lot of other things to see what really feels best. But for those of you who have done running to do walking, power walking, then race walking, it's a unique experience. Franco has been a motivating force out there. And Franco has won, he, he's won silver. That was a silver you took at the national championship. And that was your first national silver in a 10K. And there were tough, tough competitors. But again, the, we, we trained in hot weather. We train, like these people tell you, we train in a room where I turn the heat up and no air so they can get an idea of how close to death you can come without dying. So when they're in a race, then they don't say that it's uh, too hot. And the, and the day will come when Franco will be pulling down some records and gold medals, and that's when I retire. I don't tend to help. <laughs> yeah, you know you would. If you gave up sex like Sam. This year I will pass you. Oh, that's good. That's good. We got a challenge. We're going to go back to the old times where he used to be behind me all the time. He didn't tell you that. I used to watch him from behind. I got tired of his behind, and then I got in the head. But Franco, Franco is, uh, this is going to be his best year ever and he will be doing champion work again. Remember, Sam's been a champion now for six years. Right, Sam? Wow. I've, I've done pretty well over the, over the whole time I've been running. Uh, which is how many years? Almost eight. Eight, all right. I'm eight. Going to my eighth season. Eight. And Joan, what are you, six? Uh, seven and a half years. Seven and a half? I've got a gold in my first race. OK. Um, No, that, I don't even keep them. That's not important. What's important is that these people are able to sustain this. Now, remember, Franco's been an athlete for, what, 11 years? 11 years, 11 years, 8 years, and they continue to improve. He's getting faster. Buzz is getting faster. Now, remember, you go out there and you see how many athletes have one good year, and then that's it, or three good years, and they're wiped out. Their immune system's gone. Their body's broken down multiple injuries. So when you see people who are examples, like Franco and some of the other athletes we have in the group, then it's an inspiration to know that someone's doing something right. They're doing something right. And so continue to learn, continue to motivate, because what I'd like to see is a year from now. For instance, Vincene, she's getting very, very fast. She's getting much better. Vincene, did you do any uh, championship races this year? Did you? Did, 
We did? Well, then you should come up here. We, we, if you don't tell us, we don't know. <laughs> tell us what other races you did. Is anyone else here won championships we don't know about? Um, my first race, I, I remember uh, it was pouring rain and um, I came in last and everybody went home so nobody was there and when it was raining I remember crying as the rain is coming down, the tears were blending in with the rain and I just... Um, Race walking has been kind of a struggle for me to continue to continue and um, be determined at it. And it's something that I really love. I remember the first time that I um, was doing it, the first couple of months, um, my shoulders were very tense, my body was tense, and it's helped me to relax in my form and not only um, in race walking, but I've been able to carry it in other areas in, in my life. Um, so my goal is uh, now I've got a couple races coming up. My first um, timing was 12.36 per mile. I've gotten it down to 9.05, and I'm, gonna, I'm heading for the eight-minute mile. So thanks, Gary <laughs> and uh, Franco. <laughs> Now, before we finish, what questions do any of you have for any of these athletes? What a very inquisitive group. <laughs> can you believe this? All right, what we're going to do, uh, Jeff, I want to get you all together so we can get you a picture, and we'll get you some copies of this blown up.